in the previous video, we have seen the types of legal research models and there I had promised you to talk about eight models of legal research. We could complete six models of uh, legal research in the previous lecture. The remaining two models I will discuss in this video. At number seventh, I wish to discuss with you is the experimental research. However, experimental research is rare in the field of legal research. However, there is a emerging trend in certain cases where experimental research has been used. So, what is experimental legal research? It is about testing the relationship between two variables in terms of cause and effect. The independent variable is supposed to cause and dependent variable is considered to be the effect of independent variable. Now, this kind of setting becomes very important where you wish to explore the role or the effect of a particular factor on the so called incident or any other particular matter. Now, this type of research follows a very rigorous model and a robust quantitative techniques in order to establish the relationship between two variables and these variables are positioned as independent and dependent variables. Uh, the next and the last type of research is particularly relevant for legal research that is historical method or historical research. Friends, many legal events can be traced in a historical trajectory. Many doctrines which are discussed in the field of legal research are the product of a historical development. The pursuit which is followed in the development of those doctrine becomes very important to examine and to follow. And therefore, many episodes, phenomena, incidents are particularly the evolution of a particular custom, practice, legislation, precedent, all these things can be traced to the historical genesis and development. This method is very popular in comparative legal research or in pure historical research. The method which is adopted in researching this type of uh, issue is to compile, collect and collect the data and reach to a finding or analysis of a particular phenomena. And this method is becoming really very, very popular in legal research. So, viewers, now I turn to what I call legal research. Legal research is a core requirement as far as this video is concerned. You know law is a normative science. When I say law is a normative science, I am trying to say that the laws which are enacted, they are in the form of written law and they codify the conforming behavior that the people should adhere to and the legislative expectation that they are bound by. So, legal research has to be located in the normative understanding of law. Friends, I have certain examples to pose before you in order to give you a better perspective of legal research. So, for instance, if I ask you, do we have more and more acquittals taking place in the society or do you think the punitiveness in the legal regime is rising or if I say we are criminalizing more and more people. You must be remembering in the recent past we had a fierce discussion or a very important debate as to whether triple talaq should be criminalized. 
many people are asking that the marital rape should be considered as a serious crime or society to be decriminalized. You know why I am raising these questions? Because when you attempt to answer these questions, you rely on some information. By the way, what is the source of that information? The source of that information is either your ideas and impressions or if you have read something on that. But certainly in very few cases your ideas are based on some specific research that you have conducted on those subjects. Legal research is about finding answers through research so that your answers become widely acceptable and they do not remain impressions or conjectures. Legal research is a practical utility. If I ask how many, how much crime we have in the society, you can say there is so much crime, but your so much and my so much would be very different. So, if I say the crime has increased by 5 percent, it makes some sense. And therefore, in legal research, when we try to introduce the component of scientific method, empirical inquiry, we are trying to give a credence to the answer that we are trying to provide. Friends, the origin of law is related to three things, legislation, precedents and customs. Now, our legal research is also largely concentrated on these three components which are important sources of data. Nowadays, lot of juristic writing is emerging as a source of legislation. Now, I have to say something that society is dynamic and law works for the society. Law caters to the dynamic needs of the society. Therefore, uh, law cannot be static, law has to be dynamic. So, if in the light of this discussion, if I offer that broadly the legal research model pursues two types of research inquiries, those research inquiries are doctrinal and non-doctrinal. Doctrinal means we are talking about qualitative method of research. So, the popular uses of qualitative in social sciences is equivalent to what we call doctrinal in legal research. So, you have to keep in mind that doctrinal research is equivalent to qualitative research and other type of research is non-doctrinal which is equivalent to empirical or quantitative model of research. The nature of legal research has to be understood also in terms of the objectives of legal research. Now, objectives of legal research are slightly specific because when you want to discover a new legal fact or you want to explain an existing fact into a new context or for that matter you are interested to understand a law in terms of its impact on the society or on the stakeholder then these becomes very important you know objectives of your legal research. I also tell you one of the objectives of legal research would be to understand the gap between policy and promise. Policy could be a law or enactment, promise could be the expected function and therefore, lot of new issues are coming like for instance, the impact of technology on human being or behavior and how law is coming into play, how the market forces are you know generating and how the stakeholder behavior is governed, how the requirement of new IPR is happening, our patent law is emerging, what are the new dynamics of crime, whether law is impacting the people or not impacting the people. So, some of these objectives could be theoretical, applied, practical, policy based 
and so many. And for all these objectives, there has to be a research. And what could be that research? I have just told you in my lecture that popularly known, we have two models of uh, legal research, which is doctrinal and non-doctrinal. Doctrinal research is basically to contribute to the discipline in terms of its theoretical understanding and non-doctrinal is about answering some of the difficult questions in law with the help of data, with the help of information. And now this methodology is becoming more and more robust and I am hoping that research and legal research is going to be matured in times to come. So viewers, in this module, we have gone through various aspects of basic research. This module focused on basic research and basics of research where we started with fundamentals of research, understanding the different dimensions of research, importance of research, functions of research. And there we have also gone through the different processes in research. We have particularly looked at the types of research which are available in the field of law. And we have seen the various functions of research. I have also highlighted the importance of method in the field of legal research. And we have tried to understand the emerging objectives of legal research. And I think taken together, this module on basic research must have given you a basic orientation to peep into the more detailed understanding of uh, legal research.